Hello and welcome to yet another Blender uh, VR chat whatever tutorial. Uh, today actually I'm going to be covering something that's really cool and will help a lot of people uh, with their uh, avatar importing um, get it done very quickly, solve a lot of problems before they become problems, uh, and do it all automatically. Uh, this tool is called uh, Cat's Blender Tools. You can get to it by going to vrcat.club, which is the VR Chat community forums. If you click on the Tutorials and Tools section and you look for Cat's Blender plugin right here, the current version is 0.0.9. Um, you can find the plugin here. You just download the zip file and you install the Blender uh, or the add-on in Blender like so and there's this cool little gif here that shows you how to do it. So I'm not even going to bother showing you how to do it. I already have it installed and updated. It's super easy. File, user preferences, add-on, select the zip file and then click install. Like that's it. Um, it's very easy. Make sure you hit save user settings after you're done. Yep, the uh, cat does it there. Cool. So let's go ahead and back out a little bit and open up a brand new Blender window. Um, so like I said before, I already have it installed. I'm not going to show you how to do that. Um, but what I will show you is the tab here. So you'll, once you have it enabled, you'll have this cats tab right here. And you can see there's all kinds of stuff in here. First and foremost, I want to show you the updater. Uh, this is super important and super useful. Uh, if you ever want to make sure you have the latest version, which you should, you should click on check now. It'll check and it's telling me it's up to date because I installed it literally like 15 minutes ago. Um, what uh, I would also say is make sure you have the latest MMD tools. It is not a hard requirement anymore for uh, the CAT plugin. It is still useful to have the latest version of MMD tools. Um, I believe the, God, I always forget which branch this is, but if you look at the new MMD tools video on this same channel, you'll see that there's a link there to the uh, most updated branch. So let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you how dead easy it is to do all of this. So let's clear out the uh, workspace like we always do. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my OSD keys uh, down here uh, just in case you need a reminder. Uh, again all I did there was hit A twice and then hit delete and it deletes everything that I had selected. So first let's import something and I'm going to import some new Cerno. Uh, I'm going to import one um, without translating it, without running it through PMX Editor um, to do name translation. I'm going to uncheck physics and display because I don't care about joints or rigid bodies. I'm going to set scale to 0.2 because I know this is going to come in huge. And that's pretty much all I'm going to mess with here. Um, if this is running past you too fast, as in you don't know how to, how to use MMD tools, you should go and watch that video I mentioned before. So let's go ahead and import it. Uh, first thing that we're going to do is open up this sidebar and just part of my process, I'm going to go down, uncheck Tune Texture, Sphere Texture, click Shadeless, come in and make sure the textures look good. Yep, that looks like a Cherno. Um, so we are good here. Uh, we're not going to touch anything else with uh, MMD tools because CATS covers everything else. So the first step that I would normally take with something like this is I would look at the armature and say, oh, well, there's... There's, it's got its root bone here, and it's, and it's all translated wrong, and I've got, or it's not translated at all, rather. So uh, what I'm going to do instead of worrying about all that crap is I'm going to go to Cat's Tools, and I'm going to go to Translation, and I'm going to go through each one of these four buttons. First one, let's go ahead and click on Shape Keys. If you see here, the Shape Keys are basically what move around the face to give you expressions. They're all in Japanese here. Uh, I unfortunately do not know Japanese, but you can see that's like a little blink. Uh, this one's like a, a flat eye kind of blink. Either way, it's useful to have these translated because normally I, I have an option enabled that basically shows Japanese text. But normally if you don't have that option enabled, all these are just going to be blocks because Blender doesn't know how to display Japanese text. Um, so anyways, let's, let's, let's fix that. Let's hit shape keys. And we're going to wait around a second. It's just going to kind of sit here. Um, I may suggest to Cats, or if Cats watches this video, you may want to consider using the, um, I know there's an API hook you can use for progress bar here. Uh, you may want to look into that. Um, but either way, look at that. It's all translated. I mean, it's badly translated, but these are always badly translated. It runs through, th what's cool about this is it doesn't use a uh, built-in static dictionary like the MMD Tools Translate does. It actually dumps all of this into Google Translate via the Google Translate API and then renames them one by one. We're going to do this again for Bones. Bones is going to take longer because it's going to try and translate every single one of these skirt bones and that's going to take a while. 
Um, again, a progress bar would be useful, but for now you can kind of just let it go and alt tab or whatever. Um, anyways, you go through, you do shape keys, bones, um, meshes and materials. If something, if you click on something and it doesn't translate all the way, I've had this happen with bones before, uh, with armature, um, uh, and with meshes, uh, you can just click it again and it will rename them properly. So let's go down to there and look, the bones are renamed. They're no longer all in Japanese. Let's do the same thing with meshes, which should just take a second because there's like one mesh. Yep. Cerno version 201 mesh. Now let's do the same thing with materials, which shouldn't take too long because this one I believe has 15. And that's it. Translation is done and I didn't really have to do anything. The translation for this was rather easy because they're all just named material 1 through 13. So anyways, we're done with translation. That's it. Like no more alt tab into Firefox or Chrome, copy paste between PMX editor. It's just done. Everything's done. It's dead easy. Uh, speaking of dead easy, uh, the next thing that we're going to go and fix is our armature. Uh, this is probably one of the most difficult points for new users because armatures are complex. They're weird. There's a lot of like uh, in MMDs, there's these weird twist bones, which are all over the place. You can see them. Um, Miku Miku Dance uses them to kind of twist the bone back and forth uh, so the arms can rotate uh, but we don't care about that here because uh, it, our VR chat handles all of that for us so uh, what we're gonna do is instead of fixing all of that manually which can take a while and it takes a lot of knowledge and know-how and seeing what screwed up before and how to fix it later we're just gonna hit this big fix armature button which you, as you can see does a bunch of just stuff it does a huge amount of stuff for you um, it reparents bones it removes unnecessary bones like twist bones it renames bones so that they make more sense and that they'll work with eye tracking later on uh, it will mix white paints so that the the transitions between weight painted zones uh, is more even it'll rotate the hips uh, and the legs so that they are more uh, in line with what is required for full body tracking IK it'll join meshes so if you have multiple meshes it'll join them together uh, it'll remove rigid bodies and joints it'll remove bone constraints um, rigid bodies and joints you shouldn't have in the first place because you can uncheck that but it does it anyways bone constraints uh, it also removes because the, the, sometimes you have weird bone constraints on your leg bones and it deletes unused vertex groups which is just useless data um, before I click this button I will say that I'm not going to decimate this model I'm not planning on actually uploading this I'm just showing you these tools what you would want to do before all of this is you want to go through the typical process of separating this entire mesh by materials like that, and then decimating the mesh as you see fit, uh, basically. I know this one has a bunch of extra geometry underneath, like she's actually, this white shirt right here actually continues under here. There's skin under here that doesn't need to be there. So getting this down under 20K would be dead easy. Um, although most of the complexity is in the hair. Uh, she's kind of got bed head going on here. So either way, uh, let's make this easy. You don't even have to click on anything. Like you can just, I, I, I have the armature selected, but I'm pretty sure you can just click fix armature. It will find the armature and it will fix it. Now, if you pause the video, go back to before and look at the after, you now see that there are tons of bones that are like, I, and, and I'm in edit mode, important to point out. Remember all those bones that were here and here? Yeah, those are gone now. They have had their weights merged into their parent bones. The hip bone has been turned around and has been set up properly. The uh, thigh bones and the hip bones have been lined up. Uh, the head bone, I believe, is... Uh, I don't think they adjusted the head bone. Um, but all of the extra bones that had no weights or are useless for VR chat have been removed. Uh, this this armature just works like it's beautiful this is a perfectly set up armature for a vr chat avatar and we did it with one button push uh, which is insane i mean this is like the first time i made an avatar it probably took me three days before i figured out and grasped the concept of what an armature was what bones were necessary what weren't necessary um it was just absolutely crazy so another thing that you can do if you do run into some problems where you have um a bone that didn't uh, get deleted properly or you still that that uh, is an extra bone so let's look down at the feet i think i have a couple here let's go into edit mode so there's left toe, I actually want to keep that, but there's, oh no, I actually, I think I can keep this. Let's go into pose mode and see what happens when I mess with this. So if I move this, oops, let's go here. As usual, I'm doing it live. Okay, so that's actually the toe, and that's actually the foot. Okay, so we may be safe to delete this bone, but the way to do it, uh, I'll just show you an example. If you hit mix weights, this button is or very useful. It deletes the selected bones and adds their weight to their respective parents. So what this means is it will take 
these bones I can multi-select as well. The parent of these bones, I believe, is the foot more than likely. It's, yeah, it's the actual ankle. So what it'll do is it'll take the weight, if any, assigned to this bone and drop it on top of this right here and then delete this bone. So let's just hit mix weights and they're gone. There you go. So that's kind of how you can cover extra bones that um, maybe the fix armature button doesn't catch. However, if you do find that you have bones that your uh, the fix button or the fix armature button didn't catch, you should upload your blend file to the forums um, right here. Uh, just put it into this thread or send it to them privately um, on maybe Discord or via a forum PM. Say, hey, it didn't delete these bones properly, and they can add it in as kind of a catch case. Uh, MMDs for the most part follow a a loose set of rules, but they're still rules, so you can implement basically ways to detect bones that you don't need and that will be fixed in future releases. So anyways, the armature is done. Like that's it. It's all, all completely done. It would be going faster if I wasn't talking my ass off. So let's continue onward. Um, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to show you visemes. Um, visemes are basically the way that you uh, talk in your mouth moves in VR chat. Like when you are, um, when you are, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I got distracted by something else. Uh, when you are speaking, the lips on the character will move as if uh, they were uh, your lips, so it'll look like that you are talking. What are these bones here? That's interesting. Oh, it's uh, the actual teeth? This model has teeth bones? Weird. Anyways, visemes basically move the mouth so it looks like that you're talking. So let's let's go here. You probably already know what visemes are, but we'll show you anyway. See, her mouth opens as if she's talking. Ah is the A shape. There is the OU, sh or um, I think there's the like CH shape typically, yes. And then the O shape uh, is your here. So the reason why I pointed out those in particular is because uh, the Cat Splendor plugin knows that these are what those shapes typically translate to. It knows that, well, the only body shape here is just, uh, or the only mesh is this right here. If I hit this button, it will create the rest of the blend shapes just in a split second and we'll name them properly. So watch. And there you go. Every single blend shape has been created, including silent. Um, it, I mean, it, it's, it's dead easy. Uh, it works perfectly. Um, it looks pretty dang good. The only way to do it any better would be to manually create each one. Um, but this is probably like 15 minutes of work compressed down into five seconds of waiting for a script to finish, which is amazing. Um, on top of that, eye tracking is another thing. So if you want to do eye tracking, um, you can do it through here. All you have to do is specify the mesh, the head, the left eye, and the right eye, which it typically fills out for you. Blink left and right, lower lid left and right. It fills out most of this for you based on the translated names. Uh, I do know from experience from testing this model before I did the video that it actually misassigns the wink right here. So if we look at wink, where are you? Wink, wink. So wink two, and then I think Oh no, that's wink two and then wink right. So if I do these two at the same time, you can see why this is a problem. <laughs> she, the, it's a different shape. This is like a happy and this is kind of like a, a regular blink. Um, so what we'll do instead is I'm going to tell uh, it to use a different blend shape um, instead of using these two. Uh, let's say, so if wink two looks like this and that's the proper right one, then wink right two is the other one that we want to use. So we'll set wink two and wink right two, which I am probably scrolling right over and someone's yelling at me. There we go. So now we have those two. I don't do lower lid typically for uh, eye tracking, but if you create lower lid shapes or if you already have them, you can set them here and it will do it. All we have to do is hit create eye tracking and there you go. Everything is done. Um, it's created the proper um, shape keys here. It's moved the bones properly. It's created new eye bones, um, which are, I think, is it the new ones are here, I think? Eye left. What are these? Are these the old ones? Left eye. Uh, I believe that these are the new ones that are created. If I hit Control Z, does it undo everything? Let's see. Magic. Oh boy, I don't I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, no, it didn't undo them. Okay, well, whatever. Uh, so what that did is it basically created new bones for us. Um, oh, 
I, L, and I, R were the old ones. So if we look here at, oh, I'm going to have to undo all my work here. Uh, it created new bones here that I have just undone. Um, but either way, if I just hit this again, it should work properly. Yep, it created the bones. So there you go. You can see that the new eye bones are right there. Uh, if we move them around, if we rotate them a little bit, um, let's see. Let's hit the rotate button, if I can remember. Oh, there we go. Well, that's not doing it. Interesting. But this one works. No, oh, it does not. Oh, because I'm not in pose mode. God. So if we hit rotate here, we can see that the eye moves around. Um, this particular model acts a little strangely when it's rotated. Uh, I Sometimes I do eye tracking, sometimes I don't. Like uh, it, it looks strange to me uh, on some anime characters, and if you don't get the offset just right, it looks uh, really weird, especially towards like the outside of the eye here. You see how the, uh, the I'm pointing at my screen as if you can see it. See how the pupil kind of clips into the eye there? You would have to kind of tweak the distance of these bones, uh, how close they are to the eye, and that would look better or worse. Some, I honestly don't use eye tracking, but the fact that you can just click a button and set it up here is amazing. Uh, you may also be able to tweak the eye bone distance from eye vertex here. Basically, that tweaks the amount of distance that it creates these new bones away from these uh, the initial vertex group right here. Uh, in this particular case, you would probably want to bring it a tad bit closer, so you could just drop it down to like maybe 0.18 and see how that works. Um, but either way, that's eye tracking, like done. Again, this, this is ridiculously easy compared to the manual process to do it before. Um, bone parenting is very useful for skirts. So if you look here at the armature, which I just hid, there's a bunch of skirt bones here. If you wanted to add dynamic bones to this, um, first off, that would be a terrible idea. There's way too many bones here and it would be a very CPU intensive one. But let's just say for the sake of doing it, that you wanted to make this a dynamic bone skirt. Putting a script on your hips is a bad idea, a dynamic bone script, because the hips are used for all kinds of other animation in VR chat, in particular to use for like sitting and it's the base root of your character. You don't really want to move that around. Um, you don't want to attach a script to it rather. So what you can do instead is just hit parent bones with the skirt selected. There you go. It just created a duplicate hip bone and reparented the entire skirt to it. So now if you look up here, go under hips, we now have root bone skirt zero zero and they're all under here. Dead easy. You can do the same thing for hair. Um, so in this particular case, it doesn't group the hair together, but that's okay. It's pretty easy. All we have to do is hit front hair here. It's now created a duplicate of the head bone, which we can find if we go down to neck and then head. We can see that there, a, there is a duplicate of the head bone right here called uh, root bone front hair. And if we select the rest of the hair that we want to put on here, like side hair, back hair, and then we select that one as the last one, we say make parent armature keep offset there you go they're now moved over there um, if you didn't follow that basically what I just did is I selected all of the hair bones then I selected the root bone which meant this is the active bone in the selected group I did the space bar to bring up the menu I typed in make parent chose armature and I chose keep offset so that the bones don't get connected um, but give that a shot and see how that works out for you but anyways now I can put a dynamic bone script on my hair and it won't mess with the head animations um, that's base. Well, no, that's not basically it. I've got a major one to do. Texture atlasing is important. It basically reduces the amount of draw calls that each one of your characters um, take when you are rendering in VRChat. Currently, this model, I can tell you right now, would be one mesh and 13 materials, which means you would have 13 draw calls. Um, the most optimized you can be is to have one draw call, uh, which is the most I mean, that's the best way to do it. Uh, now, that doesn't count shadows and other things like that, but we want to get your draw calls down as low as possible. So Texture Atlas does this automatically. I will say my only criticism of this entire uh, process is that this uh, this uh, Texture Atlas plugin is not the most optimal. Um, the most optimal way to do it is actually to create a manual Texture Atlas and just copy all of your U your previous UVs, which are the how your textures are mapped onto your model, into a new image, and then bake the textures into that image. That is a video that I will cover later on. Um, there's also a thread by Noe Noe, who you can find right, I believe it's in Tutorials and Tools. Uh, where are you, Noe? Uh, here we go. Texture atlasing and cleaning the manual way. You should read this if you want to try and do that. But this does a pretty dang good job. So I'm going to say pack islands because I want them to be packed in nice and 
get as close as possible. I'm going to change the margin to about 0 0.04. Angle's fine. Area weight I haven't really messed with. Um, a 2K texture is mostly fine. The, bo the body weight is mostly fine. But anyways, let's hit Create Atlas and watch this material over here. This is going to take a second. Oh, I got to save this first. So we'll call this Untitled 2 because I am bad at naming files. So let's hit Create Atlas. Watch these materials over here. Do, 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 and there you go. It's now all in one uh, texture. So let's take a look at the actual model itself. Oh, we barely lost any detail, like at all. There's, I mean, there's a couple of errors here and there, but you can probably mess with the Atlas a little bit and some of the settings and get better results. But, and there's some issues with the ribbon here, but honestly, that looks pretty pretty good for like a push button solution. So anyways, what this means is now you're one draw call. You are as optimized as you can be in regards to draw calls. This is a huge deal. Texture atlasing is admittedly pretty difficult, um, for, especially for newer users. Um, doing like UV editing, like I'm going to be walking into here just so you can kind of see what the atlas looks like, is um, it can look scary. I mean, obviously this looks scary. What the hell is all of this? Uh, like unwrapping can be scary. Doing all of that can be scary for a first time user. Once you get used to it, it's not nearly as bad, but still it's it's amazing that we now have this process that instead of having to do it um, by hand and learning over like several iterations, we can just push a button get it, and get a pretty dang good solution. Um, I mean, you wouldn't see issues with this unless you looked really close. Those eye, the eyebrow thing is the only problem here, and you could fix that by probably using maybe a larger margin, um, or maybe changing the area weight or angle a little bit. Um, now, the thing is, is before you do this, you should save a copy uh, because once you click Create Atlas, there's no going back. Um, you would have, you can't Control Z out of this, uh, so you would need to reload your old one. Uh, in order to uh, fix that. If you do have weird textures, uh, if the texture atlas comes out strange looking, make sure that you have disable multiple textures um, checked. And also make sure that when you start out above this MMD shading thing, you uncheck sphere and you uncheck tune textures. Um, but that is basically it from here. You would just export this to FBX, bring it into Unity and start playing around, put some dynamic bones on it, upload it to VRChat. I mean, if I was going fast and I wasn't just talking like this, th I could do this in 10 minutes, dead, like dead easy, um, which is ridiculous. Uh, most people are taking hours to bring in their first couple of avatars. And even I, when I'm, I mean, as many avatars as I've brought in and as many avatars as other people have brought in still usually take about an hour and a half or two at best uh, to do all of this, to make sure everything's just right. So this is, this is crazy good. Um, Cats, uh, if you are watching, thank you so much for this tool because it is ridiculously amazing. Uh, I hope everybody can learn from this video and use it, and they hope they can provide feedback to you, so you and your team. Um, actually, let me go through and name all the people who worked on this because it's not just give me all your cats. It's also uh, Shodaria, Hotox, and Nitri are all um, contributing to this add-on, uh, and it is just it's like life changing for creating avatars and bring them into VR chat. Um, I am most excited about people being able to create texture atlases in one click because that means I get more frames and other people don't complain as much uh, about it. Uh, the only caveat and the only thing that this add on can't really do anything about is. Uh, and I'm going to be putting this in every video from uh, here on out. Please limit your use of dynamic bones as much as possible. Like, this would be ridiculous. Don't put dynamic bones on this because this is what, so there were, I think, how many different bones here? So we got like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it looks like about 16 um, root bones and then multiply that by one, two, three, four, five. So 16 by five, that's what like, oh, got him horrible at math. It's been a while. That's like what, 70, 80 bones. Uh, yeah, that's 80 bones. So don't do that. Don't stick a dynamic bone uh, script on there because that's having to animate 80 bones, which is way too high. You should only be animating maybe these hair bones, which is like maybe 10 or 15. Um, anyways, that PSA aside, uh, this has been Cat's Blender plugin, a tutorial video. Um, please, please give them props. Uh, their entire team has worked very hard on this and they continue to work on it. Um, if you have any questions or if you have any bugs, post in the forums. They're extremely responsive. Um, but that is about it. Uh, thank you for watching.